Welcome to episode 5 of the Witcher lore series. In the last video, we witnessed his first northern war. The initial success of Nilfgaard's Blitzkrieg, the bloody battle at Sodden Hill, and the truce of Sintra that followed, marking a territorial victory for Nilfgaard, but an overall victory for the northern kingdoms. For they have halted the, the advance of countless black-coated legions at the southern banks of the Aruga. After Nilfgaard's painful defeat, Imperial morale was at its waning low, but Emperor Mirvar Emrys was not in such low spirits. He had learned a great deal from his first venture into the north. Albeit that this insight came at an unthinkable cost, the lives of more than 50,000 soldiers, his Imperial Majesty had finally came to understand that he lost to the north's unity, and that if he ever wants to march across the Aruga, reach the Pontar, and conquer lands all the way north of the Dragon Mountains, he would have to break their unity. For three years, Amir pondered potential strategies to weaken the north, and together with his group of advisors, he finally believes that he had found two major cracks that would crumble the north's unity and provide Nilfgaard with the greatest opportunity. The first being mages. Sorcerers and sorceresses have always been an inseparable part of politics in the northern kingdoms, they serve as top advisors to the kings and queens, and provide their p powerful magical powers in the case of national defense. Emir had been both fearful and intrigued by their abilities as he witnessed Nilfgaard's defeat at Sodden Hill, when a mere 22 northern mages held back an attack of a hundred thousand imperials. Emir knew that he needed to somehow sever the friendly ties between the mages and the northern kingdoms, and that it would be best done using the mage's lust for political power. Emir even reached out to a former enemy, the sorcerer Vilgefortz of Ragavine, who led the northern mages in the battle of Sodden Hill. For Emir not only witnessed his powerful abilities, but also his dark craving for political influence. The emperor also realized another weakness of the north, racial xenophobia. Elves, Dwarves, Dryads, and other Elder Races have been discriminated against since the start of humanity. People always took their anger out with them and pointed to them as scapegoats during crisis. And nowhere is such unjust persecution as fierce as it is in the Northern Kingdoms. The Elves of Dol Blathana have always been oppressed by the neighboring kingdoms of Edard and Lyria, resulting in the creation of an Elven guerrilla force. The Scoia'tael, commonly known as squirrels because of the tail they wear. The Dryads of Brokulon Forest does not have it easy either, with lumbermen supported by the Temerian army enroaching into their sacred territory, cutting down countless trees to make arrows and siege engines. The once peaceful Dryads finally had enough and started hunting any human who dared to venture into their land. Thus. The militarization of these elder races against the northern kingdoms could not have come at a better time for Emir to take advantage of. While the Imperator of Nilfgaard was busy planning out his next steps, the kings and queens of the north did not sit idly on their thrones either. King Vesemir of Redania, King Foltest of Temeria, King Henselt of Kedwin, King Demavend of Edirne, and Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia held military council at Hague Castle in northern Edirne. The Nordling monarchs agreed that a second Nilfgaardian invasion was on the horizon, but was indecisive regarding the proper response. After a heated debate for days, they championed Queen Meave's strategy of a preemptive strike across the Aruga River to take back the Kingdom of Sintra. They also needed a legitimate reason to break the truce. This task fell on King Demavend of Edirne. He was to disguise a small team of his soldiers as Nilfgaardians to provoke the guards of the Lyrian border. As soon as he and Queen Meave condemns this staged provocative act and attracts Emir's attention to Dol Angra in the west, the army of Temeria, Redania, and Kedwin would storm across the Aruga in the east from Lower Sodden, Verdun, and Bruges and take back the Kingdom of Sintra. It was a bold yet delicate plan. A real opportunity for the Nordlings to take revenge on Nilfgaard and restore the Sintran throne. And maybe that would be how history unfolded if the sorcerer Vilgefortz of Ragavine never met with Emir Var Emrys. 
It had been a merry night on the island of Thaned, near Velen in northern Temeria. It was the northern mages' reunion. Sorcerers and sorceresses dressed up in exquisite doublets and grand dresses socialized with each other, asking about secret lovers and newly acquired gems. But more importantly, they probed each other on their political attitudes. With Nilfgaard prowling at the southern banks of the Aruga, they needed to know where their allegiances should lie. The chatters died down as the night grew and many returned to their rooms. Then suddenly, the silence of the evening were broken by sounds of explosions coming from the main courtyard. Vilgefortz of Ragavine, leading a band of Nilfgaard employed mages, has initiated a coup d'etat against Northern Conclave. The sorceresses, Francesca Findabare, a half-elf, opened up a large portal where several dozen Skoyatel leapt out to join the fight. Emperor Emir had promised her the freedom of elves in her homeland, and appointed her Queen of Dol Blathana, now in an independent elven realm. Amidst the chaos, several northern mages were slaughtered, and the rest fled for their own lives. The news of the Thanid coup spread quickly, and the northern monarchs, now distrustful even of their most loyal mage councils, send them away hastily, or even imprison them, leading to na nationwide witch hunts. As if there wasn't enough bad news for the northern kingdoms, Verden, a small kingdom to the east of Temeria, after receiving an emissary from Emir, decided to withdraw their fealty from King Foltest and swear allegiance to Nilfgaard. In the Redanian capital of Tredegor, King Vesemir was assassinated by an elven mage leading to a total purging of magic users by the Redanian special forces led by Dijkstra. In Kedwin, rebellions by non-humans rose up everywhere and King Henselt had his hands tied up in quelling them. King Foltest of Temeria, knowing that Verden was threatening his flank and that Redanian and Kedwini forces can no longer be deployed on time, decided the original war plan was not viable and sent out a messenger on an emergency mission to notify King Demavend of Edirn not to provoke Nilfgaard as scheduled. This message was his only hope. Nilfgaard would have no legitimate reason to break the truce and start an invasion immediately if they were not provoked. The messenger rode for four days straight without rest. His whole body ached with exhaustion, but he knew that the message he carried was of most urgency and ahead of him he could see the high walls of Vengerberg on the horizon. Just a little bit more, he said to himself as he spurred the horse once again. He suddenly felt a sense of extreme coldness in his chest, a feeling of emptiness. He looked down only to see a steel arrowhead sticking out of his body. It had elven engravings on it. Skoyatel, he mumbled as he fell off his horse and onto the rugged ground. A hundred yards behind him, something shuffled the tree branches. A day later, Amir condemned the act of provocation by the kingdom of Edirn, Lyria, and Rivia, and hung the Edirn soldiers, still dressed in Nilfgaardian black. He had long ago moved the Nilfgaardian center to Dol Angra, and now they were ready to march north. Amir watched the flow of the Yaruga from the banks as his army slowly crossed. He knew time was not a concern, for Edirn will not be receiving any aid. Not from a threatened Temeria, not from a fearful Redania, not from a chaotic Kedwin, and especially not from a scattered conclave of mages. On the other hand, Emir not only has his fully prepared regions, he had the Verdinians, Dryads, and the Skoyatel helping to weaken the northern kingdoms internally. The Emperor is now certain that this would be the war to unite the continent. The staging of the grand performance is now complete. Watch the second Nilfgaard Nordling War completely unfold as we return in episode 6.